Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Power Rangers Playback. I am so excited today. Um, we have an amazing guest, as you know, the beautiful Melody Perkins is going to be joining us. Um, I'm sorry that you just get me today. Um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, actually, Nakia is filming, which is a big yay, but I didn't get to have my partner with me. So that's a bad, bad thing for me, but good thing for her. So you guys are going to be stuck with me, but thank goodness I have Melody to uh, to make it more interesting <laughs> for you. Um, so Melody is, as you know, was the Pink Ranger in Lost Galaxy. She was the second Pink Ranger, Carone, and um, her and I actually have a lot of similarities because we both were evil and became good. Um, Astronomer was one of my favorite villains, actually. She's pretty awesome. Um, so I'm so excited to have her here today, and let's bring her in. <laughs> hi oh, hi hi everyone yay super chat let's just, oh oh okay super chat super chat okay <laughs> i got the move i got the move i just wanted to say thank you for having me and thank you for to everyone who is joining i'm just i was thinking about it before uh today and i was like Gosh, I haven't done one of these in so long. And then I was like, I always feel uplifted whenever I connect with the community and with the fans. So thank yes. you. Well, you are one of the fan favorites and everyone was that has been asking for you for a long time. And we're so happy that you were able to give the time to, to share with us today. Um, they were so excited when we announced you. Everyone was like, Melody, the Aww. queen. I'm so excited. <laughs> that's so crazy. Every time, that's always, every time that happens, I'm like, really? But it's, I feel like I'm amongst, you know, Power Ranger royalty. So thank you. <laughs> oh, darling, you are such a love. I always enjoy when I get to see, which is not often enough. It's and not. And guys guess. watching, Melody is like the antithesis of astronomer. She's the sweetest thing. And <laughs> Mia thinks you sound like Snow White. She's like, she's like a princess, like <laughs> embodies I that. Feel like, I feel like that can be trouble sometimes because it's like, I'm not, I'm not always matching my voice. So sometimes when I'm feeling like very opinionated or angry, it's just a, it's like a whole thing. It's a complex. Aren't we all yeah. right now? I mean, everything is opinionated and political these days. So it's we're that. in good company. <laughs> It's a charged moment, that's for sure. <laughs> yes. And how, before we jump into all these wonderful questions that we have here, how have you been handling all of this craziness that's been happening in our world? Are you doing okay? Thank you so much for asking. I feel like I am doing okay. Um, I've Things in my world have gotten pretty granular. Like I feel like I'm just I'm, I'm thinking about taking care of my family, you know, making sure my mom and dad are okay. They need, as we were discussing earlier, they need a lot of assistance and just kind of taking pleasure in the simple things in life on a day-to-day -day basis, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and trying to just remember and feel gratitude every day. Yeah. Um, and then step from there and think about how I want to move through the world with a, a, a lot that's happening. It's, it's overwhelming. I definitely, um, this was another thing I was speaking to someone about earlier is I've been having anxiety and I feel like a lot of us are and um, acknowledging that and kind of working through that is important. And I think it's, yes. it's okay. <laughs> yes, I know. I, I, I think I was saying to my husband just recently, like I've always considered myself to be a very joyful, happy, positive person. Mm -hmm. um, but over the last year, I, I also have been suffering with a lot of anxiety and, and waking up in the middle of the night, just yes. like having trouble breathing, like all of that. And, and um, just because you're, you know, a positive person or you're a happy person doesn't make mean you're exempt from, from that, those feelings. Um, so what so kind of things have you been doing to kind of uh, take care of yourself and, and to help yourself with that? I have, have any been, advice for our listeners. Yeah, no, I really appreciate you saying that you felt the same way. Um, I try to get outside as much as I can. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's a little weird because there is so much smoke covering California. Um, exercising, meditating, yoga, sort of the basics. Mm -hmm. um, I also really um, recommend counseling. I think that's very helpful. I think that the pandemic, especially, it's been very isolating. We don't have those usual, like, like just in-person connections and hugs and things that really help. So yeah. yeah, just anything like that. I think it's 
I hope that everyone understands that it's really okay to reach out for help when you need it. Yes. Oh gosh, that's such good advice. Absolutely. Well, should we take it over to the Power Ranger fandom now and see what we have here? Um, I don't know if you've met this fan. So whenever we do a super chat, we do a little dance. We go, super chat, raise them up high. Like that. Okay, got it. I've internalized it. I know my motivation. (laughs) I am ready. As goofy as possible. That's what we, that's our motto on this show. (laughs) Perfect. Um, so the first question is from one of our members. His name is Scott Bicklicky. He's wonderful. He lives in the UK. He oh, says, hi, Melody, big fan of Power Rangers, especially in space, which was his favorite. What was your favorite episode or moment? And I hope you come to the UK soon. Oh, hi, Scott. Thank you so much for your question. <laughs> it's hard for me to pick my favorite episode because I feel like there was it just depends on my mood like I loved date with danger of course that was so much fun it was so much fun eating like a giant like turkey leg and just I don't know it was just like a different side of astronomer um (laughs) I also really liked um invasion of the body switcher where Tracy and I switched it was so much fun I think also Countdown to Destruction. I feel like that's when I finally felt like Astronema for some reason. Sadly, that was like the last episode of the season. But, like, but I mean, it was really, that was like sort of a really wonderful conclusion to the role at that yeah. point, like what I thought was the conclusion. So Yes, you were really a, a wonderful Pink Ranger. I, I, just, I just told Melody, you guys, that I watched her first when she became the Pink Ranger. So she was baking as astronomer and then she had this amazing fight scene with with Trakina and it was so awesome I'm like damn this girl can fight it's awesome (laughs) I'm really interested in hearing about your debut as evil like I want to know more about this did it involve the cat was like the cat part of this yes so I was I came in I was under a spell with from Rita and Rita me to lure Tommy away from the Rangers and to steal the pink power coin from Kimberly and so they found this beautiful white cat in a park and they adopted Mm -hmm. the cat and so I was spying on them as the cat so I would turn from a girl into a cat and stole the coin and lost her powers and yeah and then I the spell starts to wear off and I start to help them um, get the coin back and save Kimberly and yeah and then she passes her powers to me and goes on to be a gymnastic sensation. <laughs> oh, you started. So this was a moment in your trajectory when you were evil, or did you start I as evil? Did about my I was uh, evil. My I came in as an evil character. So I I think I probably did about five or six episodes as evil cat, mm-hmm. and then um and then the tra- pink power transfer was over about three episodes. So yeah, so I think I did cool. like nine or ten Mighty Morphin episodes, or maybe maybe eight episodes before I became King Ranger. So That's yeah, such a great entrance, like a, yeah. such a great introduction to your character. I love it was, that. It was really fun. It, it was a good, and it was a nice way. The way that they did it to give um, Kimberly tribute. I know that they weren't able to do that with Valerie because of her situation, um, but it was really nice that they gave. A, a nice goodbye to, to Kimberly. She's really yeah. one of the only characters they did that for, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, a lot of, like, with Austin and, and um, Trini, Tri, Twee, I'm sorry, Austin Twee and um, Walter, they just kind of disappeared and the new Rangers came in and then yeah. same with Karen. We, she was there one day and gone the next and then Nakia was in. And so they didn't really do a lot of that. And that's that's a big disservice to the fans, I think, when they do. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's a really good point. I hadn't thought of that. You know, I just sort of like when I came in, I felt like it was like pretty choppity chop. Like it's like, okay, new cast members, like bye bye, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, but that yeah. is a really interesting point. Yeah, I've gotten to know Valerie pretty well. She's a beautiful person. Um, and I've yeah. gotten to hear her side of the story too. And um, yeah, she's, it's, it was not, they didn't handle it the best way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That is so disappointing to hear because she yeah. is absolutely just wonderful. Yeah, she's a lovely she girl. She is the person that you see on screen, like just yes. lovely and intelligent and mm-hmm. generous, you know. She really is. 
Mm -hmm. um, okay, next question. Hold on, let me scroll down here. There's so many. Actually, Ken. Um, okay, know. next question is Kenny Shibata. He's one of our Platinum members. Hi, Super Chat! Great to have you, Super Chat! <laughs> Hi, Astronomer. How does it feel to be one of the sex biggest villains in Power Rangers? Oh, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, first of all, thank you for saying that. That's the <laughs> nicest thing because I feel like the furthest from sexy. Let me tell you, like, especially in that vinyl suit, like I was like, Ooh, oh. you know, I was like so excited when I was wearing the big puffer coats, you know, because it's just never easy being in skin tight vinyl no. but um so I didn't really think of it that way but thank you so much for saying that I um I truly just tried not to think about <laughs> it's funny because I think a lot of actresses like Serena when I uh, was talking about that when she was on our show too it's and I certainly felt that I you know in my modeling days I would never have done a bikini uh suit bikini oh, so I told them no not interested and um Serena was talking about when she did um the show and she was in that like super revealing outfit for the oh whole my thing. gosh yes <laughs> yeah it's it's hard you feel you feel exposed it's I, I think even for the most beautiful woman in the world there's going to be that feeling of insecurity I absolutely agree I definitely did my fair share of like body conscious modeling stuff and I feel like it never was easy. I yeah. always felt supremely uncomfortable. But now looking back, I'm like, should I have been? Yes, right? Like <laughs> you were situation, stunning. I'm like, man, I should have really enjoyed that moment when I was, you know, thinner or whatever, you know, it's yes. like you know, happier. I don't know. Embrace ourselves in our, in our youth and our beauty. In every moment, yes. Yes, I know. I hear you. I hear so, you. So thank you so much for the question, though. But. Yes. Uh, the next question is from Tai Su. Super chat, raise my pie. Yeah. Uh, he says, hi, Nakia, Kat, and Melody. Nakia is not here, but she says hello too. Hi. <laughs> uh, what is your favorite episode on Power Rangers in space? Oh, so kind of similar to the first question. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm, let me think if I can think of any others. Oh my gosh, the secret of the locket was also quite special. I'm going to add that to the earlier list. Um, but still, I do feel like Countdown to Destruction was the best. Oh, yeah. I loved that fight scene with Andros at the end and where I had to kind of die. Ooh. That was really like I had to embrace that fight scene, you know. And yeah. I he, killed, like, he killed Zordon in that episode. Oh. It was such a big deal. And yeah. then. Yeah, and then, oh. and then I tried to kill him and it came back to me and it was like this whole thing. And I don't know, wow. it's a very dramatic ending. Very intense, very intense. A lot the of emotions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kenny again says, hi, Melody. You are one of the rangers I want to meet because you are so kind and so beautiful. Oh, and he you. says, in your astronomer locket, was there always a picture of Andrews in it or did they change it? If it was always there, did you and Andrews figure out that you were brother and sister before we knew? Oh my gosh, that is such a good question. That yeah. is amazing. Because from my memory, it was always there. But I don't remember, um, did I know it? I don't know when I learned that we were related. That's just, I'd have to go back and figure that out. Maybe it was early on because I always remember those two little photos being in there. Yeah. Which is pretty oh. cool. So you and Andrus were brother and sister. I didn't think I knew that. Oh, I didn't watch yeah. the whole season. I've only seen snippets of in space. Oh, yes. That was the big thing. Long lost sister. That was wow. kidnapped. Very young. Oh, and then turned evil. I was raised. You had a good storyline. Flip door. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, next Thank question so is from Matt question. Thornton. Super chat, raise them up high. And Matt is also from the UK. Can you repeat um, his name? I didn't hear because I was talking too much. Matt Thornton. Oh, hi, Matt. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> he says, going a bit off topic here, but Melody, could you tell us about your guest appearance on Malcolm in the Middle? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was so fun. I have to tell you, like, the three kids, like everyone on that cast, were, they were just all so sweet. 
um, I had been auditioning kind of in that that realm for a bit. So it was really fun when it kind of came to fruition. Um, it was so much fun. And it was also, I will say, looking back, it's really hard to look at. So I don't know if you experienced this, but like looking back at previous footage and previous storylines. And, you know, I wore a fat suit for part of that. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I remember, so the storyline was that I was, that I had, that I was, that I was, that I had lost weight from when I was in, when he had seen me last or something. And um, I remember being in the fat suit and walking across the, the, the like sound stage. And just even the, the way I was being responded to and the way people were reacting to me was different. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. so humbling and illuminating. And mm-hmm. um, it just, it was pretty sad. It made me really sad. So that yeah. was like a strange takeaway from that filming but otherwise it was it was really fun that's really cool though that you got to have insight into a different perspective I think if we all got that opportunity maybe people wouldn't be so judgmental (laughs) I feel like I've thought that so many times you know it's it really truly does take being in someone else's shoes to understand sometimes I think that we're learning that more and more right now you know, on a smaller scale, I, I did a, a role where I had to dye my hair brown and I noticed people treated me very differently as a brunette to a blonde. Wow. Like it was really interesting. I don't, I feel like at that time I was treated like a bit more tenderly, like I was a little bit more innocent or something when I was a blonde, but as a brunette, I felt like people were more direct with me. Isn't that, Isn't that strange? I don't know. Yeah, that is really interesting. And I think it also points to like the other sort of implicit biases that we all carry Mm -hmm. that we're not really aware of that. And I think sort of that kind of reminds me in this time of taking accountability for those biases that we might not think that we have and then kind of moving through the world a little differently and saying like, why am I having that response? Or why am I taking this action? Yeah. And change that. Yes, yes. Exactly. Um, Kenia Padilla. I hope I said that right. Hello. Is it? I want to know if it's Kenya or Kenya. It's Kenya. It is Kenya. Kenya. Kenya Hi. I know she you, loves Kenya. you. She loves oh, you. Oh my I gosh. I adore you as well, Kenya. Thank you so much for joining us today. We got to give Kenya a little bit more of a super chat dance. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. Super chat. <laughs> okay. I could go on. <laughs> Just give me oh, a So she says, hello, Melody. I hope you remember me. I had the blessing of meeting you and talking to you via Zoom in November of last mm-hmm. year. You are a great person and I admire you a lot for your humility and simplicity. Greetings from Mexico. Oh my gosh. Thank oh. you so much. That's such a nice note. That's so sweet. It and is. the next one is from Donimus Prime. Super chat. Raise my pie. Would you ever come to a convention in Toronto? Oh my gosh, I would absolutely. First of all, hi. Thank you. <laughs> I would love to go to a convention in Toronto. I think as soon as things kind of, you know, chill out in pandemic world and we can kind of travel more freely, I am absolutely um, raring to go and get out there and visit with fans. Yeah. So that's a strong yes. Strong <laughs> thumbs, thumbs up. up. um kenya again she has two questions here um melody can you send a greeting to the mexican actress carola vasquez she is the one who gives the voice in spanish to astronomer carone in mexico and latin america i hope i pronounced this correctly did you say carola vasquez yes okay Yes. Oh my gosh. Thank you. And of course, Kenya, she's always thinking of others, right? Yes. And so you're like, but yes, hello to Carola. That's amazing. And I hope I'm not butchering your name. Thank you so much for bringing voice to my character so that people can watch the show. Oh, that's amazing. And also, so isn't that just incredible? I Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's really cool. Kind of overwhelming. It's- It's really cool to hear yourself in another language and they often sound so exotic and it's like, oh, I like the way I sound in in right. Like I should have done it like that. Like maybe I should have been more sassy. Sassy. Yeah. Yes. 
<laughs> um, she also says, it's amazing that 23 years later, you still have that great essence of simplicity and humility. Thank you, Melody Perkins, for inspiring an entire generation with love, Emmanuel Lopez from Mexico City. Oh my gosh, Aww. thank you, I thank you. I, I have to say, I think my ideals are simplistic, but I also think I've got a lot of the, the things that we all have kind of circulating in my brain, but I'm glad that, that what, what you're experiencing is kind and, and easy, you know? Yes, you don't give yourself Sorry. enough credit, Melody. You're a beautiful soul, <laughs> beautiful girl. Um, Kenny Shibata again says, hi, Kat and Nikia, I miss you very much. My month seems so empty without you. Please come back soon. <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. Kenny, what a we do. person. He is so sweet. We have um, platinum members there. And we, we have members from Copper all the way through platinum. But Kenny's one of our platinum top tier members. Oh and every God. two months, we do um, a Zoom chat with our platinum members. And then every month, we get have all member chats and stuff. And he's always there and so happy. Um, and he's just delightful. And so this month was our month off because we were kind of planning and um, sure, coming up sure. with some new content and we uh, were releasing our podcast so we had we were trying to have a month of like planning so we yeah. haven't done as much chatting with our members so we miss them too <laughs> oh Kenny so nice to meet you that's awesome yeah. sounds delightful yes okay next question is from Al Cat. super chat raise them up high can't join live chat tonight. So this must have come in yesterday. Can't join the live chat tonight because I'm going in for my second evening at my new job. Yay, congratulations. But have fun, everyone. That's awesome. Aww. Congratulations on your new job. <laughs> that is so awesome. Yay. Yay. Hope it um, all goes really well. Matthias Rodriguez from Brazil. Super chat. <gasps> Raise up high. Much love from Brazil. Oh. Corona is an awesome part of our lives. Could you guys send a message to Morphin Poster Gem group? Morphin Poster Gem. Poster Gem? Yeah, Morphin oh. Poster Gem. <laughs> Poster. Hi. Oh my gosh, greetings to you all. I'm so excited. Every time I'm a little shy on social media, but every time I see these posts from Brazil, I'm just so beyond and beside myself like you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for watching and for following our stories. And yes. hello. Kiss hello. <laughs> um, Kenny again. He likes you. Kenny, Kenny likes likes him some astronomer. <laughs> no. uh, what, he says, what were this what was with astronomer's hair? Which one was your favorite? So this Wait. is another thing that's like, uh, I kind of change up every few months, like which one was my favorite. Um, Astronema, I think they changed her hair just based on kind of like, cause she was very erratic. She had lots of different moods. Um, I think my favorite at the moment, I feel like it might've been the original, the purple. Yeah, that's baby. my favorite. Yeah, that's kind of what I always associate. But I also have to say secretly, I liked the red. I do? She brainwashed and she had the gear. It's yeah, just a whole another side that I really enjoyed playing. So yes. So why don't you tell our listeners what um what how did you get the role of astronomer? What was your audition process like? Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's very similar to a lot of us, but but I um was I had been modeling in Europe and um doing some commercials while I was there. So I sort of got like a little resume put together and then came to San, I was living in San Diego at the time and started doing a couple of random commercials and guest stars. And then suddenly got this audition from a local agent who was like, you need to go to this hotel. I mean, back then it was like normal, like for, I guess, a guest casting director and it was Iris. Oh, was like, she's so oh. lovely. Oh, Iris. She's an angel. She is she so is. lovely. So it was like me and her in a hotel room and um, and I had to just try to be mean. So I was like, sure. And I was like super astronomy and like, oh, and um, it was like six auditions later of like going back wow. and forth to the point where I was like, I'm angry. Like I thought <laughs> I had this, I thought I had this in the bag. 
And back then I didn't really understand the stakes and what it was to be on a series. And yeah. it was all extremely new to me. And then finally, after like a big audition up in Santa Clarita with like the larger group, you know, of producers, et cetera, um, I got the role. Wow. But then well, like finding out what she was going to look like was a whole nother story. Like I was like, yay, I'm a villain. And then I showed up in hair and makeup and I was like, oh, <laughs> Now this well, is this my, is intense. Yes. <laughs> so. Yes. It's I'm sure it was exhausting having to go through all that hair and makeup every day every day. Yeah. But, but yeah. luckily, like the makeup artists were amazing. So yes. Yes. Did you have Cynthia and and Roxanne and, mm -hmm. and I uh, had Roxanne for sure. Yes. And uh what was the little blonde? Um the, oh, I don't know. Oh, Vicky, yes, yes. Oh Vicky. my gosh. Yes, she was so no Nancy. Nancy, that was her name, not Vicky. Nancy. Yes, yes. Yeah. I so I have to say, I have to just disclaim I'm so bad with names, but I remember these people with love in my heart. <laughs> oh yes, they were well, they were like part of our family. We were with them every day for so long, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kenya again. Kenya says the four Power Rangers in space. Did you do casting for another season of Power Rangers? Such a good question. I've never been asked that before, and I have not. Astronomer was my first Power Ranger audition, and I actually wasn't involved. Uh, I wasn't very familiar with the Power Rangers until I started. Yes. Doing okay. It. Um, <laughs> That's such a Kent good Brown, Super Chat, raise them up high. Mm. Hey, y'all. So, Melody, how did you and Valerie meet, and did she give you any words of wisdom? Also, how do you not age? Yeah, oh my can. gosh, I do not <laughs> age. Let's just just say I do not age with appropriate lighting. <laughs> like, like this is why I'm not aging, folks. Um, but, <laughs> um, I am trying to remember when I first met Valerie. It's interesting. I think it might have been toward the end. I don't know that we met in the beginning because she had already left. And so I think she pre-filmed a lot of the stuff with the transition. I please, I apologize if I'm wrong on the details on this, but because um, I feel like she was kind of with us throughout this process, you know, it was like this Valerie and I, you know, so I, I knew what she looked like. But anyways, I think I met her toward the end um, and but then really got to know her much, much later at a con. So she and it was just like. <gasps> Yeah, yeah, it was extremely special because she, gosh, she is just amazing and she's a trooper and it was, it's always kind of hard to talk about coming back because it's bittersweet, you know, because yeah. ideally we wouldn't have had to do that. Yeah. But, uh, she's yeah. just delightful. I just, oh, yeah. I hope that sort of answers your question. <laughs> I apologize. Here. Uh, Barry Butler, he's one of our members. Super chat. Hello. <laughs> we should do the wave like here let's see if we like kind of change it up like kind of get group yeah <laughs> I can do that yeah we can do it like <laughs> yeah anyway um hello ladies uh Kat and Nakia you are missed and Melody Kat and Nakia you are missed and Melody is a great it is great to finally have you on here my three questions are Ooh. how was it for you playing a villain in one season and a ranger in another was it hard and which did you prefer Ooh, that's so great. Yeah. Um, how was it? It was really fun because I've always kind of felt more like Corona than Astronema. Astronema was a big stretch for me. So it was a completely different like acting situation. Um, and then Corona was always just kind of, I mean, I hate to say it, I wasn't a very good actress. So Corona was kind of just playing myself. <laughs> so you're not, a, you, you're so hard on yourself. <laughs> no, I don't mean it in like a you know, but, but truly it felt, it felt so close to my personality that, um, that it was easy. And then the last question was, which did I prefer? Uh, she said, um, hold on, let me see. Uh, was, uh, and yes, just which one was uh, harder and which did you prefer? Oh, harder, definitely astronomer. Yeah, definitely. Um, and also because I didn't have a ton of acting experience. So my first day on set was kind of like, look at the red dot in the camera and say your lines. Right. Um, right. So by the time I got to Corona, I was, I was a little bit better at it, you know? Right. Yeah. All the, all the, the ins and outs of, of hitting your mark and all that, you were to have that down. <laughs> 
Yeah. And maybe that I didn't have to like scream in a scene because like we had mics, so I don't have to like project, you know, the same <laughs> things that were just really funny about that time. Yes. Yeah. Um, Very also said, also, I think the storyline of you and Zane was so cute. A villain and a ranger in love was amazing. What was your thoughts on that? It was so much fun. I loved it. It was such a departure that she would sit and sort of like pine for Zane was so funny. And then yeah. to be able to kind of transform for a moment to just me as, you know, me was really, yeah. was really fun. It was like a whole little vignette that I enjoyed. Oh, good. He's a sweetheart too, Justin. I love him. He's great. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Uh, another one of our members, Moira. Um, super chat, raise them up high. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jazz in. Um, can't stay for the live chat. I work, but just wanted to say you are lovely. And Melody, one of your char out of any of your characters that you portrayed, which one was the most memorable? Um, and it doesn't have to be Power Rangers. It could be any anything you played. Oh my gosh, I have to say, well, I mean, Power Rangers will always be take like up a huge space there for me. Astronema was by far my largest departure, but I really also enjoyed playing Margo um, on Charmed. It was for, I'm sorry, sorry, Nance. Was it Nance or Margo? I think it was Nance. I don't remember. Margo? Sorry, sorry, we were the <laughs> we were the three blonde sisters that took over on Charmed, and it was so fun and so enjoyable and crazy so that's another one that stands out for me obviously that's not the name but but the process <laughs> the character yeah Margo Stillman I think is who I was <laughs> um okay cool um next question is from Kent Brown again uh, what was it like putting the astronomer get up back on for Lost Galaxy and Super Mega Force p.s uh, all your gems oh thanks um what was it like it was coming back for lost galaxy it was awesome i felt like i had a handle on astronomer and i was so excited to play her again and especially that opening scene you know like the part where we're at the auction and it's it was just yeah. so fun and then we loved filming it it was fun to be with the producers again um, coming back from Megaforce was a little bit more intimidating. It had been a little bit longer since I, since I had worn, um, the costume, but I loved it. I, I was so honored that they did a, a little scene with Astronema and that they were able to include it in the extended version. Yes. That's awesome. I didn't know Astronema was in that episode. I saw the, I've seen the part where you guys it. all took your helmets off. It was very dramatic and yeah, I, I, I thought they did a good job with that, but I didn't see the whole episode, so. Yeah, there was a longer one that was available that where she, when she takes her helmet up, that there's a flash of astronomy. Ah. But I think that would have been confusing for a lot of new viewers. So I think they were a little bit cautious on that. Right, right, okay. Uh, Kenny again says, astronomer would not stand a chance against the Zeo Rangers, especially Zeo Ranger one and two, pink and yellow. Yeah. Take that, astronomer. Okay. Thank God I'm good. Thank God I was, <laughs> I went good because that sounds really scary. <laughs> I would have to really ramp up. Dino Garth won. Super chat. Raise him up high. He just wanted a hello. Hi. Um, Ken Brown says, uh, lastly, have you read any of the Boom comic stories that feature astronomer and Karun? Oh my gosh. I have a couple of those, but I haven't read through the stories I just get so captivated by the artwork I just yeah. can't even oh my gosh every time these these I get I see images online or I go through the comic books I'm just astounded at how talented people are I mean I know. how they've taken these stories and expanded on them and it's just amazing I know it is it's amazing. truly amazing I, I actually love that they've taken these fan um, fantasies and like and and made it a reality for them. So you have all these different universes and crossovers. It's it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. and sort of like modernized and taken our characters to like current times, which is great. Yes, well. yes, yes, exactly. Um, Harold Hines, super chat, raise them up high. <laughs> 
Okay. Oh, I liked you. Got into it, Ben. Melody, you're getting some moves now. You're yeah, I'm gonna get it. creative <laughs> from the waist up. <laughs> uh, Harold says, "Hi, Melody. I just wanted to ask, what was your favorite episode of In Space? I think she answered that one actually. She already answered that was uh, the destruction, right? Countdown to destruction. Yeah, uh, uh, invasion of the Body Switcher was amazing. Yes. That one was super fun. Uh, Date with Danger, of course. Yes. Insane. And then uh, Countdown to Destruction, for sure. Yes, that's right. Okay, let's see. Going back here. Oh, my goodness. All these questions. So many. Um, let me find where we were. Oh, my gosh. I hope we can get through all these. Um, buffer. We have to pick up the pace here, Kat. <laughs> okay. I'll try not to talk so much. <laughs> oh, okay. We're doing it. We're doing it. Um, Kenny says, oh, I forgot to say hi, Caron. Because he's been oh, so God. focused on astronomer. <laughs> Corona says hi back. <laughs> um, Kenya has asked if you can please send a greeting to Ranger Girls Mix. MX. Oh, Ranger Girls, I love you guys. Thank you so much. <laughs> Your posts are just so, they just make my day. Thank you. She's, she's very excited. And she said she wants to see you again at MorphoCon next year. And many kisses from Mexico. Oh, thank you. Thank Very you. Sweet. Oh. Um, Kenny also says, did you send a special, uh, did you use a special voice for astronomer? It sounded like it. If so, can we hear something with that voice? <laughs> I don't know if I could do that voice, but I feel like she was really kind of like, because, you know, it's kind of hard to make myself evil. Yes. I don't know. So there was a lot of like kind of screaming and I don't want to like burst your eardrums, but it would be like, destroy them or, you know, just like, right. Like, that. like <laughs> right. There you go, yeah. Kenny. There you go. You there got you to go. a little side glitter. of Melody. Just think about <laughs> coronavirus, Melody, and it'll just come out. Oh my God, it would. And then I would like frighten myself with, it, you know, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, wow, I didn't have it in me. <laughs> Michael Valdiva, super chat, raise them up high. He says, good afternoon, ladies. I hope all three of you are well. My question for Melody is, what was your favorite part about playing astronomer? She was fierce. Thank you, I love that. Um, my favorite part is that I had to really stretch to be her and do things that were super uncomfortable for me. I had to be very like, because I'm introverted and I had to be very like, oh, and like, you know, kind of um, commanding. And I think it almost yeah. like helped me develop that part in myself, maybe a tiny bit, because it's like, I'm not used to being that person. Yeah. 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 Like sorry. public speaking, honestly, scares. Yeah. It's terrifying. So <laughs> astronomer was another level. <laughs> It's funny, a lot of actors are very shy, like, and, but yet when they're in a character, they're able to express. And like uh, Beyonce talks about that actually with her Sasha Fierce thing, oh, like you have to queen. tap into that, you know? Yeah, do you get yeah. that a lot though? People will be like, why are you nervous? Just be an actress, just act it. And I'm like, oh no, it's not the same. It's not the same at <laughs> it all. It is so not the same. <laughs> no, I, I'm with you. I used to get buckle at my knees if when I had to talk in interviews and stuff I would get like all red in my throat and stuff you know my stomach would flip and yeah it was yeah I, years, but, uh, I think conventions helped me because I had to get up in front of people and talk and I I mean I was like the first time I did a convention I was terrified and I couldn't even remember the question they'd ask me I'd be oh like my oh my gosh yes. <laughs> yes. they asked me same I'm so nervous same situation yeah. like I just stop like understanding facts and and same with the conventions like doing those panels yes I would be so nervous when they called on me no <laughs> like, I know I'd be like oh my god please let this be an easy question <laughs> can I remember what what happened in episode 52 yeah exactly yes. um beat magic unleashed super chat raise them up high hey ladies and melody if you were another in another life what would you like to do differently than this? Oh, that's a good question. And Melody, how can I take an autograph from you? Oh my gosh, that's so sweet. Yes, I would need to figure out a way for people to get autographs. So I will be doing that. And then I'll post finally on Instagram. Good job. Um, <laughs> do you know, I have to say, if I could do things differently, I would follow my passions earlier 
And I would just trust myself and trust that somehow that would work out. I think for me, I wasn't, I was kind of leaning into my, what people around me were saying and people weren't taking the acting very seriously. And I got really scared. And I think I bailed out sooner than I wanted to. Mm. And I, I will say that I regret that. And I wish, I know that there are other passions out there and that I, I do have other things I really enjoy, but I think just following your heart is so important and just yeah. trusting that it's going to work out. Yeah. You'll find a way, <laughs> like, yes. you know, absolutely. Great advice. Great advice. Uh, Skyhound 28. Super Hello. Chat. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, he says, what was your initial reaction to the design of Astronomer and did the costume feel heavy when you wore it? That is such a good question. And I'm going to answer it honestly. <laughs> I tell you that I was mortified because I was coming because <laughs> I was coming from like this modeling world where it was all like, you know, woo, and then like to be this evil character who is like heavily done with these crazy wigs. And, you know, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that this is what was going to be happening. Of course, I learned to love her tremendously. But um, yeah, it was hard. Yeah. What was the rest yeah. of that question? See, this no, is that was it. You answered it all. Okay. You answered it all. Um, he, also said, nervous. he also said, I'm just curious, Catherine and Melody, but was there any amusing lines or moments that you recall as your evil version? Um, amusing. Yes. I think one, my, one of my favorite was um, when I was the cat monster and I had to say, no more pussyfooting around. <laughs> I think, and I said, the cat's out of the bag. Like I had all these silly puns. <laughs> of course you did. It's time for a cat. cat and mouse. <laughs> <laughs> it was like so stupid. <laughs> but it's kind of amazing too. Yes. I feel like, I don't know, amusing, silly. I feel like there were so many funny ones, you know, like, I don't know, like, the, I feel like I was saying fire the saddle lasers, like probably once to twice every episode. Yes. And then there was like, you don't know me, I'm astronomer, your worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, really, guys, I'm not your worst, but I am. <laughs> she was kind of horrific, though, sounds like. Um, she is, yeah, she was mean. She was yeah. Mean. Uh, Zachary Bowers, Super Chat, Raise Them Up High. Hi. Hello, Astronomer. It is a great honor to see you. And I was wondering, would you want to see your character to, uh, to come back as the pink Lost Galaxy Ranger? Would you want to come back as that? Mm. Oh, gosh. I feel like I passed the baton, but I love that we've had opportunities to come back and do mm -hmm. things. I know, Kat, you have as well. Yes, like, to to appear on shows like like Mega Force Legendary Battle, but yeah, I mean, if they would have me, sure, I'd come in as like maybe a mentor. That's what I say. That's what I say. I'm like yeah. I'm, I'm a little long in the tooth to be a Power Ranger now, but <laughs> it would be fun to be like a mentor or a teacher or a parent or something. Sure, I, I would love that. That would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> um Justin out oh sorry wait on we're back to Sky uh no we already read that one Justin Outland super chat raise them up high yay, hello ladies yay. Melody from an acting standpoint did you find it more challenging to play astronomer or Corone the Power Ranger and why well definitely uh astronomer because and I was talking about this a little bit earlier just because she was such a stretch for me and it yeah. was hard, but, um, and she was challenging and uh, a little bit, she just was so crazy. Also, I will note that, that having Hillary be my, my predecessor yes. <laughs> was just like, so, or coming before me, it was just so scary. She, I thought she was so talented yes. and so funny and so larger than life. And I just, yes. I needed to create my own character, but mm -hmm. I was also like, Oh my gosh, she's so good. What am I gonna do? So yeah, so that was really great. challenging. Yeah, she was. Yes, Hillary's hilarious too. She's so good oh, at comedy. So she good is at comedy. So funny. Yeah. Yes. Yes. 
Well, you did a good job making a difference though, I think. Like, yeah, she, you definitely were like, she was more sassy and sinister and, and not as like campy, I guess. As yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Katie Monier actually had the same question, but shout out to Katie. Woo, woo, woo. Hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. Hi. Um, I'm going to read Skyhound has two questions. Um, Melody, you, uh, between you, Melody, Patricia, Tracy, and arguably Christopher Kane and Lee, regarding hairstyle, who do you think took the longest to work on? Oh, definitely Melody. Yeah. For, for astronomer, right? For the wig. Oh my God. Astronomer. Yeah. I think they worked on those wigs. They really spent a lot of time on the wigs. Yeah. Yeah. And I, but I think that definitely Christopher wasn't a fan of the bleaching. Yeah. From what I've heard. Yes. <laughs> I suspect that would be hard to go through like normal life with that hair. You know, uh, Jason Frank also had a lot of hair issues because they had to, he had curly <laughs> hair. They had to straighten his hair. So he took a while. Oh my too. God. Yeah. But then that's why in turbo, he let it go all curly because he was sick of it being blow dried. <laughs> that would be a huge change, especially for a guy. I feel like yes. just so much time and hair. Yes. Um, Skyhound again says, Miss Perkins, do you think you and Corona are similar in certain ways? And if so, how? Oh my gosh. I feel like we're similar in that. And I think we're all probably similar in that. I think uh, I've, I look back and I feel like I've maybe made decisions when I was maybe less informed or, or less experienced that, that I, that I regret. And that now I wish, you know, it's like at the time I did the best I could. And I think that's similar to Carone. Like she spent a lot of time kind of trying to write things that she wasn't proud of when she was astronomer. And right. I think obviously not as drastic as astronomer, but, but I think, you know, there's definitely things where I look back and I wish I would have handled them differently. Yeah. 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 Some um, regret, little regrets there, I guess. Yeah. Um, Ben Hamilton, super chat, raise them up high. Yes. Up, ladies, especially you, Melody. I have a burning question for you. In part two of Countdown to Destruction, when you and the rest of the bad guys got redeemed or destroyed by the Z-Wave, if Andrews had killed Zordon right away, would Astronomer and Corone have been obliterated either way? Mm hmm. Gosh, I feel like that's open to interpretation. I don't know. Mm. I don't know the answer. Would astronomer? Hmm. I want to say that she wouldn't. Oh, yeah. Melody, there you have it, Ben, from the horse's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she would. There you go. She's just laid it out for you right there. Yep. Katie Monier again, super chat. Um, was dream battle hard to film? I'm sorry, was what? Dream battle hard to film. The dream Which battle. battle? The, the dream battle? What's you know what the dream is? battle? You don't remember Could you that? describe it? I think there might be different names for it. Oh, okay. Well, Katie, if you want to do another question, she can answer that. But oh, she I'm can't. sorry. I wonder, yeah. yeah, I wonder if it was like legendary and which battle it might be. Yeah. Um, she also oh, said, God. I hope you can come to Springfield one day. It's my dream to meet you. Countdown to Destruction is one of my favorite episodes. Oh, so maybe it was that battle kind of in the end. Yeah. Um, I hope that's what you mean. I, I hate to not answer your question. Yeah. The fight scenes were always amazing. Um, Countdown Destruction, one of the reasons why I loved it is because that fight scene was so yeah. I mean, I'm gonna highly have to watch choreographed. That yeah, and Koichi, you know, oh, he just made everything so amazing. Yes, I he was a him. really incredible choreographer. He was, yeah. and also so full of humor and like joy. So everything yeah. was fun. But yeah, that was a great fight scene, and I think yeah. I think all of us had had a little bit of experience under our belts, so we were able to kind of really get into it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, Brandon Lister, super chat, raise them up high. Hello, ladies. I have a quest two questions for Melody. How did they approach you about taking over as Galaxy Pink? Oh, I want to know that too. <laughs> How did it feel to be part of the legacy battle empowering just super mega force? Oh my gosh. So the first question, um, 
I was literally sitting in my apartment in, <laughs> in LA, like probably watching Friends. And then I got a call and they were like, do you want to come back? And that was pretty much the extent of it. Like, that was that. It was that yeah. simple. And I was like, yay, fun. So it shows that she was a wonderful person to work with. That's why they wanted her back. <laughs> get enough of her. Oh, thank you. And then, um, of course, Legendary Battle. Oh, my gosh, that was so meaningful. And I think that's when I realized that there was this much larger community. I mean, I'd heard about the conventions before and I've heard about, you know, this like larger network of Power Rangers. But but being a part of that was just inspiring and wonderful. And so it was kind of emotional, you know, and I don't know. It was such an honor. It was very nostalgic to go back. I know. I felt the mm -hmm. same way as like stepping back and watching all the all of them and uh, the car, the current cast and seeing yeah. their dynamic and remembering what it felt like at their age to be part of it. And yeah, it was cool. Yeah, for it sure. Cool. And I just feel um, like there's so much like respect amongst that community and just yes. being able to sit around the table with, you know, Jonathan, the producer at the time and just being like, Yes, I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. Um, Drew C is our next question. Super chat. I'm trying to rush through these because we've got so many of them. <laughs> Raise my pie. Woo, woo, woo. Um, this is a question for all the viewers. I want to know how they feel listening to the greatness. Are you not mesmerized right now? <laughs> Do they not have chills running up and down their spine? This is Melody Perkins. Oh my God. I do, Drew. I do. I have chills right now. Absolute chill. True, that is like the sweetest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> That's just hilarious. Thank you. Well, you are you are a legend. Like you're making me like shits. I'm like getting... <laughs> you I'm are like... you are one of the favorite villains in all of the whole twenty something years of this oh. show. So you should feel very like take that in and and be you know feel good Thank about you. that. That's really the special. Creator. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Lewis Gilbert Swink, super chat, raise them up high. Howdy, Cat and Melody. I made it to my first live chat. Welcome, Lewis. I want to say one, uh, say to one of my favorite. I li I live for the different colored wigs and sass. Astronomer was still and is still one of my favorite characters and overall character arc. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. That makes me really happy. And I love that people love the, the wigs. I mean, yes. Oh, yes. I never knew what was coming next. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Nathan Hafterson. I hope I said your name right, Nathan. Super chat. Raise Hi, my Nathan. eye. Miss Kat and Miss Perkins, what is your favorite moment in Power Rangers? Ooh. Oh, my God. Favorite moment, just one. <laughs> Is there a favorite moment? I don't even know. I feel like if I talk about my season, that's like super selfish. What about you? What's I think for, moment? I would just say, like for me, it was just uh, being becoming onto the show. You know, being a part of this, becoming a superhero, um, being able to influence people in a positive way, being a role model. I loved all of that part. Mm -hmm. of the show. That, that's that's the part that filled me up. It was that's fun. wonderful. Yep. Yeah. I think that's, that's, I, I just want to add to that. I, I think I agree with everything that um, I think returning to Lost Galaxy and kind of watching that character of Astronema come full circle was meaningful to the fans. And I think I just, I'm so glad that I was a part of that. I'm just so yeah. grateful. Yes. Yes. That's awesome. Um, S Nation, another one of our members. If they did a movie about astronomer, what would you want it to be about and why? Plus, I love the astronomer outfits and I wish I had the outfit by chance. <laughs> but, yeah, I feel like the outfit is was pretty awesome, I have to say. Um, I think I really love, there was actually a comic book created recently um, that was kind of a prequel that talked about astronomer pre in space. So mm -hmm. I would think that would make it an awesome movie is to yeah. see her when she was younger and her process of going from being like an innocent child to being, you know, astronomer, the evil princess. So, yes, like an evolution story. That'd be yes. awesome. Yes. All right. Ben Hamilton again. Loved your locust version of astronomer. 
melody. The locust version, is that like you had a, a hat or something that had antenna or something? No, I wonder no. if he's referring to the so brainwash part when I was like brainwashed and I had the equipment. Oh, right. Yes, that's probably the what brainwashed it. kind of astronomer. I really liked her too. Like she was yeah. so mean and scary. Yeah. And he said, resistance is futile. Fire the satellites. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I guess <laughs> I have to you do know it we're mean, talking yeah. about astronomy post brainwash. Yeah. Yes. Um, Solid Snake 1220. Super chat. Raise them up high. Do you remember Andy off, off the screen that you Andy? Do you remember any? He put Andy. I'm reading the wrong thing. Do you remember any of the screen that you filmed um, that was cut from the episode Countdown to Destruction? was cut, it was cut from three to two episodes. Oh, so, well this, see, this is the thing. The fans always know so much more than me. Yeah, <laughs> Because I didn't too. know it was cut down to two episodes. I thought it was definitely two episodes that I read, but maybe in the writing process, they like, you know, down. deciding yeah. how to do that. Um, okay. But they definitely covered a lot of ground in those two episodes. Yes. Alex Melkor, um, super chat, raise them up. Hi, uh, Kat, Melody, would you come to Santa Barbara in California? Oh, I love Santa Barbara. Oh my gosh, yes. like tomorrow. Oh Bring yeah, we'll oh be my there. Gosh. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting in the car. <laughs> right now. I um, heaven. <laughs> uh, Kirsty Thicklicky, who is Scott's beautiful wife. Super chat, raise them up high. She's coming to us from the UK. Oh, Hi, Melody. Hi. How are you? You were one of my absolute favorite villains. Can you please say fire the satellites? Satellites. Oh, my gosh. Fire the satellites. Oh, yes. Yes. Fire them right now. <laughs> oh, my God. It's so oh. strange to, like, switch on, like, astronomy and do that. Like, yes. Yeah. Yes, you did. You did it well. You did it I well. I feel like I need to at least have like the wig on or like a or like something like something to sass you fully on. embody. Yeah, yes. way too innocent looking right now. <laughs> says her husband says you're beautiful. You look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. She does. Um, Andre Asante, super chat, raise them up high. Hey, ladies, hope you're both well. Melody, how was your experience on Charmed? Oh my gosh. Again, awesome. My big challenge going on Charmed is I decided that I would just just forget about being concerned and watching myself and just embrace the craziness of that episode. And everyone, again, it was just the most delightful experience. I guess I've been blessed like throughout my career. I haven't really had a lot of bad acting experiences. That's good. Lucky you. Yeah, yeah it was really fun. It was such a good time. Good. All right. We have a lot of questions. So guys, I'm going to cut off the super chats now. So the last question that I'm going to ask is going to be from Ben Hamilton, but I have about 10 more questions. So we'll, we'll speed through these, but no okay. more super chats guys. Cause I don't want to take up any more of Melody's time. <laughs> oh. um, Chris Kolka, super chat, raise them up high. Chris is also one of our members. Um, still at work at the moment. I just wanted to say hi. I oh my gosh. Hi. And thank you for taking a moment to say hi during the work. Yeah. Um, uh, Kenya again says, um, what was your reaction to Hillary Shepard after filming the rivalry scenes between Astronomer and Diva Tox? Oh my God. Um, ah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cause she's so fun. Oh, I loved her. I still love her. She's great. Um, she always kept me on my toes because she's so good and she's really good at improvising. Mm -hmm. So that was like a whole nother thing. She's fabulous. Like, yes, yes, yeah. she is. And, and then respect for her only increases. You guys have become good friends too through con doing conventions and things together. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had some really, yeah, we've done some really fun stuff together. So. Yes, I love wonderful. that. Yeah. Um, okay, Katie Monier says, Melody, you're my favorite Pink Ranger. I love you. Oh, I thank you. Aw, it's so, isn't it nice? Don't, don't you feel like your bucket is getting filled up right now? Yeah, it's always just so shocking and surprising. I don't know. It's, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's really uplifting and lovely, and I feel grateful. 
Good, good. Uh, Sandrock, super chat, raise them up high. I just got here and I can't really stay long, but I want to give a shout out to the queen of evil and I hope I get a chance to meet you one day. Thank you, I do too, I hope so. Thanks for even just saying hi. Um, Matthias Rodriguez, the Morphin Poster Gem group, he says, Melody, how does it feel to be with the Ninja Turtles? Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. That was You got to work with the Ninja, Ninja Turtles? Turtles? Yes, it was <gasps> hilarious. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow, so we, what season? Fun. What hmm? season? With, in space or Lost in Galaxy? In space. In space. Yeah. I, I, tried, I made them turtle. evil for like five minutes. Oh, yeah. it was oh. a great plan until it didn't work out. But oh, yeah. well, that another. was very smart of her. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. Right. Mm. That was another great episode, like high on the list, I think, for me. It was fun. <laughs> I really liked your wig, too, for that episode. <laughs> um, OK, where are we? Uh, Lewis Gilbert Swink, Super Chat, raising up high. Not sure if it's been asked as I joined a bit late, but how was it Oh, working with the Nick? She just talked about that, the Ninja Turtles. So do, I hope you heard that, Lewis. She just answered. Yes. So much fun. Yes. Gosh. Um, Dahak666, uh, Super Chat, raise them up high. I never, I've never forgotten your epic return on Lost, Lost Galaxy and the battle you had against Trakina. Please come to Anime Expo so I can see you again. I saw you at WonderCon in 2016. It was a great honor and it now, is now too. Oh, thank you so much. And I'm so glad we were able to meet. And oh my gosh, I loved that scene as well. It was so yes. much fun to film. It was yes. also a little scary because we were going up Vasquez Rocks and yes. I had an amazing stunt double that did some of the scary stuff, but oh, it was such a great scene. You did a really good job and you looked so so beautiful so beautiful oh thank you it, um, it was all that lighting and like the wind that they do no, in your hair it's, and it's like... all beautiful jeans <laughs> the way your parents created you <laughs> <laughs> um john e ramirez says groovy oh yeah. groovy okay I'm, I'm here for it <laughs> i'm here for groovy <laughs> Skyhan28 says, hello, Melody, with regards to the design of Astronomer, what was your initial reaction to the reveal and how did the suit feel? Oh, yes. So just, to, yes, I, I was really freaked out at the be in the beginning and it really grew on me. So I was obsessed with her by the end, but at the beginning, I was a little bit freaked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, did you, was it just the wigs they changed or your actual suits changed as well, like what you wore? On your body. I had different battle armor, but for the most part, everything was the same. It was just the wigs that were changing until I was brainwashed. Um, and then the suit also changed. Who brainwashed you? It was Dark Honda. Oh, is that your dad or something? Or Oh my God, Dark Honda was the, what, I think Dark Honda was the, the monster who actually kidnapped me, but oh. I was raised by Ecliptor. Please, fans. Don't be mad if I got that wrong. Alex, <laughs> Alex was it? nodding. So I think Alex says, oh, yes. Good. You're good, yeah. good. Thank Dirk you, fact checker. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Because Dirk Honda was by far the scariest monster on the show. He was terrifying even to work with. Really? Like his costume was so scary. Like every time we worked together, I would be like, ooh. Like, <laughs> so did scary. she, did, did astronomer answer to him like he was the like the master of the universe and you were one of his people that was controlling things or were you over him that's a really great question like i think i was kind of answering to ecliptor but then okay. i was kind of working my way up the ladder to uh, dark specter to be the queen of evil okay. so dark honda kind of was trying to I think figure out his place in all of this and i think uh. i was an impediment Okay. Also, there was quite a lot of villains in that season. Okay. Going on. Andre Asante again. He says, you are two of my favorite pink rangers. Aww. Kat fought mid-control through her sheer will, power, and Perone redeemed herself as a force for good. Great character. Up. Thank you, Andre. Oh, well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Jen X6887. Super chat. Raise them up high. Hi, Melody. Is it true that Astronomer was originally supposed to die in Countdown to Destruction? Also, do you think Countdown should have been a movie? 
oh my gosh, that would have been amazing if it was a movie. I don't think she was supposed to die. No, I don't. Yeah. I don't think so. I I didn't hear about that. I hope okay. not. <laughs> I'm glad she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, me too. Um, and then last question. We get we did it. Uh, ben Hamilton. He says, I felt that Caron's resurrection should have got a Beauty and the Beast touch to it. I could see it work. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, Melody, do you have any last thoughts that you would like to share with our audience? <laughs> I would like to share that this has been such a joy. Aww. And I love chatting with you and chatting yes. with the fans. And thank you for the opportunity. And I don't know, you guys are amazing. I, I feel like the Power Ranger fandom is very unique and special. And I love how everyone supports each other. And just, I wish there were more of you in the world, just generally. I think the world would be a much better place because you're all fantastic. So thank you. Oh, thank you. It's been such a joy seeing your beautiful face again. I hope I get to see you in person soon. It's been too long. I think, when did I see you last? Like 2018, I think it was at Ranger Stop. I think it was 2018. That's yeah, or maybe so 2019. Yeah, too long, too long. Yeah. Hopefully you look sooner than later. And you're wonderful. And I'm so grateful that we got Ditto. to have this hour together. And um, to our fans, thank you so much for tuning in to see this beautiful lady. And um, if you have any um, questions for her or you want to find her, she's on uh, Instagram, Melody Perkins Kiss Hug. Um, <laughs> you can find her. <laughs> And um, and she's gonna. She says she's gonna work on getting a way to get autographs to people, and you can yes. sign up. You need to create a website or something for them, so they. Yes, can I have you. to figure something out. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So thank you for joining us, sweetie. It's been a joy, thank and you. Thank you tune guys. in next time to Power Rangers Playback. Bye, awesome. everybody. Thanks. Bye.